guys. So it is the start of another week, which means the start of another reading vlog. So let's chat about my reading plans for this week. I have three books that are on my TBR that I want to read this week. I didn't really intend on having like a theme for this vlog, but these are all horror books. So I guess I'm having a spooky week. The first book that I have here is My Dearest Darkest. This is a YA sapphic horror where these girls are giving human body parts to a monster in order for the monster to grant their wishes. And then we have Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is a sci-fi horror where this woman finds a spaceship that disappeared 20 years ago and it's haunted. And then we have The Last House on Neva Street by Catriona Ward about a boarded up house at the end of a street. So these are the three books I will be reading this week. I'm gonna be starting with My Dearest Darkest, which actually came out yesterday. So I'm gonna be physically reading this, and then these two books, I have the audiobooks on hold from my library, and I am next in line for both of them, so I should be getting them this week, hopefully. But this one, like I said, it is a sapphic YA horror. The main characters are exploring these tunnels under the school, and they discover this monster who promises to grant them their heart's deepest desires in exchange for sacrificing human body parts. Okay, so I read the first chapter of this book and I have to say this first chapter is like a quintessential perfect first chapter to hook you into a book. Like, I I'm hooked. The way that this chapter like so perfectly set up everything, let us know what the characters are, what the setting is, what the vibe is, and then ripped the rug out from under us. Rude, but amazing. I also think that the first paragraph is so good. So let me read it to you. Tell me this doesn't have you just immediately intrigued to know what is going on. While all towns have their ghosts, rainwaters were special. They sank through its submerged sea caves and slithered up its cliffs. They bounced around its caverns and tunnels like electrical pulses in a brain, echoing memories of footsteps and laughter and screams through the ground and into the towering evergreen trees. The peninsula had a habit of keeping things long after they were gone. And on May 16th, when Finch Chamberlain crossed the town line into Rainwater Maine, it decided to keep her. I already love this book. My parents just stopped by to bring me some P.F. Changs, which I'm very grateful for because I feel terrible today and I haven't been able to cook anything to eat. So I'm gonna eat this immediately. But then they also brought me like some other things that I did not ask for nor, nor know they were bringing me. So they brought me a little croissant from my favorite bakery and then some things that I love at Trader Joe's. The only thing that I said was if they could bring me some oat milk, cause I am out and I go through these so fast. I've actually never had the one from Trader Joe's, but they also brought me some butternut squash ravioli, which I love. My favorite kind of crackers. This Alfredo sauce that I've never tried, but I've always been curious of whenever I go to Trader Joe's. Some gnocchi. And then they also brought me two packages that I had. So the first one had a copy of My Dearest Darkest, which came out I think yesterday it came with some cute artwork in it. And then Sundial by Catriona Ward. Weirdly, my book packages today totally fit in with the books that I'm reading this week. And I actually bought this book on Pango Books and it came with a little postcard from a subscriber. So hi, Caitlin, thank you for the book. Oh my God, and it matches my nails, perfect. I just filmed a book haul with all of these books. So now I am going to put them away. This is always like the difficult part of a book haul because all of these books have been on my TBR cart since I got them. So I don't really know where they're going to fit. Loki. What? I know. I know. I see them. I see them. Anyways, I need, oh, did you come in here? Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put all of these books away, organize them into their spots, find their spots, and we'll see. Ooh, my lipstick came off, but my lip liner is still on. We'll see if I can make all of these books fit. Wish me luck.
All right, so everything fit, thankfully, although the horror thriller section is getting a little full, but I've been saving the like the space up here so that once I do have to like expand, I can move at least one shelf at the top. But now I'm going to edit that book haul so I can get it up tomorrow. And I'll give you guys a little reading update. Um, I am now on chapter, hold on, let me go get my book. Okay, I'm now on chapter six. So I'm 77 pages into my Dearest Darkest and I'm really enjoying it so far. There's still a lot of like mystery. I'm not fully sure what is going on. The girls haven't figured out what is going on, but the vibes, the vibes are very good. Also, I already shipped the girls. I'm not even sure if they're the ones that have a romance with each other because there's like, there's other characters that could be romantic interests. But there was a scene where the one girl pushes the other girl up against a tree and like threatens her. Listen, I am but a simple lady and I like what I like and I'm liking this. Also, I just realized this whole time that I've been filming, I've had these clips in my hair. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to edit this haul and then I will continue reading more of this. I am reading it a little bit slower because there isn't an audiobook, but I definitely think I could get to like the halfway point by later today. I have finished My Dearest Darkest. You guys, I love this so, so much. I think that I'm gonna be giving this 4.5 stars. It's very, very close to a five star. It could be bumped up to a five star the longer that I think about it. But this was oh, so amazing. Like the sapphic energy radiating off of this book. This really reminded me of Wilder Girls, especially in the, in like how gory it was and like the body horror. So if you liked that aspect of Wilder Girls, this was like surprisingly gory. I shipped these two girls so much, literally like their entire interaction and relationship. I was screaming inside and this has just like the big energy of two girls who are friends and they both like each other but they don't know if the other person likes them back so it's like the longing and the desire. This I feel like is the combination if you combined Jennifer's body, Black Swan, and the craft that's what this would be. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but it starts off with a quote from Jennifer's Body, Hell is a Teenage Girl. Jennifer's Body is one of my all-time favorite films. It's probably my most watched movie. And I could tell that the author, just aside from like putting, starting the book with a quote, I could tell that the author is a big fan of this movie as well because the amount of like references to Jennifer's Body in here, I was living for it. Especially just within like the basic premise because there was a legend at this school that like years ago this band sacrificed something to the devil in order to get fame and then they all disappeared. And that's literally the setup of Jennifer's Body. But there was also a lot of other like more subtle references to Jennifer's Body, to the craft, and just like all like that kind of genre of movies, like angry girl horror. This is amazing. And this is this author's debut book. I cannot wait to read whatever she comes out with next. So this book was a success. It is so good. So it is time to select the next book that I'm going to read. I actually just got a library notification that my holds for both of these books have come in for the audiobooks. So I need to figure out which one I want to read right now. I figured what I would do is I would read the first, let's do the first page of both of these books and I'll decide that way. Even if the page like ends mid sentence, that's where I'm cutting it. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because I am going to read both of them in this video, but I'm indecisive. It's kind of cold in here. It was 95 degrees yesterday and today it's cold. All right, so I'm gonna quickly read the first page of The Last House on Needless Street. Uh, <laughs> this was a bad idea because the last sentence on this page is, he picks up the newspaper and he says, when I see the front page, my stomach goes into curls and, and what? What's on the front page of the newspaper? Okay, dead silence. 
Let me quickly read this first page. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Honestly, both these first pages, they're giving nothing, but I'm intrigued. I'm still just as undecided as I was five minutes ago. So I'm just gonna pick one. I'm gonna go with The Last House on Needless Street. So I'm gonna start reading this and then I will come back and check in with my initial thoughts. my crunch wrap is better than taco bell but like can we look at that taco bell you got some competition good morning so yesterday i managed to read about 100 pages of the last house on needless street and it's very interesting basically 10 11 years ago this little girl disappeared. One of our main characters, Ted, was initially a suspect and a picture of his house was printed in the newspaper as being an alleged suspect, but then he had an alibi, there was no evidence, so he never got charged with anything. But because his house was printed in the newspaper, people would like break his windows and all this stuff, so he's now boarded up his house and he like very rarely leaves. He's one of our perspective characters. We're also following the perspective of his cat, Olivia, and his daughter, who is this like preteen girl. And then we're also following the perspective of Dee, who is the older sister of the little girl who went missing, and she is digging up old evidence trying to figure out what happened to her sister. It's very interesting because every single one of these perspectives is an unreliable narrator, so there is so much information that as a reader we're not being given and you can tell that you're not being told specific things deliberately so it's very confusing right now i'm confused i don't know what's going on but i am trusting that eventually i'll figure it out it's weird it's it's interesting so far i don't know how i feel about it i feel like i'm either really gonna love this book or I'm gonna hate it, depending on how the rest goes. So I'm gonna go get ready, do my hair, and film a couple videos, and then I think I will pick this back up and try to read a good chunk of it today. Okay, I just got a book that looks so cool. I've been so excited about it. Basically, a couple days ago, I saw this Instagram post titled Cottage Gore Books. It's basically like the cottage core vibe or the cottage core aesthetic. Very whimsical and in nature. So you take that aesthetic but make it dark. It has a bunch of books that get this like cottage gore vibe. And I've already read a bunch of them and loved them like Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. Wilder Girls by Rory Power, House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, The Monster of Ellenhaven by Jennifer Geisprich. These were all books I loved specifically for the aesthetic and the vibe. So I was looking through all the other books that were recommended and this one stuck out to me called Slewfoot. So I looked it up and the very top review on Goodreads says, for fans of The Witch. And that immediately rang alarm bells for me because The Witch is one of my all-time favorite movies and it is a movie that I have been seeking a book that gives me the same vibe to that. So the movie The Witch is like this, it's in like the Puritan pilgrim age and it's about this family who's exiled and so they go and live out on the edge of this forest. The devil lives in the forest and he messes with the family and there's witches and the vibes of the movie are so perfect but like specific and I'm always trying to find something that matches that. The Year of the Witching is the closest that I've read but this is a lot more on the like fantasy side rather than the horror side. So when I saw that review, I immediately purchased the book. So the book is called Slewfoot by Brom. This book is so beautiful. There's so many illustrations inside. Every single chapter starts with like a very beautiful illustration. They're all very creepy looking, but then also there's like full page color illustrations in the middle of the book. Sorry, they're all very creepy, but like, 
Look how beautiful. I'm obsessed. So I literally have not even read the synopsis of this book, so we're going to discover what it is about together. So it says, Connecticut, 1666. An ancient spirit awakens in a dark wood. The wild folk call him father, slayer, protector. The colonists call him slewfoot, demon, devil. To Abatha, a recently widowed outcast, alone and vulnerable in her pious village, he is the only one she can turn to for help. Together, they ignite a battle between Pagan and Puritan, one that threatens to destroy the entire village, leaving nothing but ashes and bloodshed in its wake. Does that not sound amazing? And also, just like the movie The Witch, this has immediately jumped to the top of my TBR. Okay, so I have finished The Last House on Needless Street, and I don't even really know how to talk about this book because I feel like anything that I say about it is going to be... A spoiler but also a lie this book is very complicated to explain or like even give any thoughts about I feel like ultimately whether or not you end up really loving this book or just kind of liking it it's gonna come down to whether or not you've seen this type of plot or plot twist before for me there's a movie that I really like that has the exact same plot twist, so it is something that I called very early on. So this wasn't as like shocking for me as I think it was for other people who've read this, but yeah, I don't know. It's very hard to describe. I feel like I would equate the experience of reading this book. Okay, let me paint you a little picture, tell you a story. When I was a kid, my grandma had this closet that was like the toy closet, but there was no toys in it. It was basically like where she would put all of her hoarder junk and then all of the grandkids, she would be like, you can play with all this stuff, it's toys. But like everything was broken or trashed or whatever. Okay, anyways, in that closet, there was a puzzle but it was in a plastic baggie, like a plastic Ziploc bag, so you didn't know what the full picture of the puzzle was, and half the pieces were missing. I tried to put this puzzle together so many times as a kid, and it was like, it was just impossible. Me trying to put that puzzle together is the exact same experience as me reading this book. Every single point of view, every single chapter, every single scene, you're kind of just dropped in the middle of it. You're not told like how you got there. You're not told where you're going. You're just given these like little snapshots where you know you're not getting all of the information, but you're as you're like going, you're trying to fit things together and it doesn't click. You don't see the full picture until the end. So I can imagine for a lot of readers, that's very frustrating. I personally enjoyed that, but I wouldn't say that this is like my favorite book. I liked it, didn't love it. So I'm gonna end up giving it four stars. I am excited to read more from this author and I feel like I liked the way the story was told more than the story that was told, if that makes sense. Like I just thought it was an interesting way to navigate a story and like have everything unfold. Um, I also will say if you do plan on reading this, do not read the author's note first. I don't know why you would do that, but like don't because it immediately spoils the entire book. Just a warning in case you're like one of those people who for some reason reads the author's note first, but again, I don't know why you would. I did a thing. For the girls who know, this week is the Sephora spring sale. So I went a little crazy with my order. I blacked out. <laughs> no, I had a lot of stuff that I've been like wanting to get. You know what? Stop. I have this tendency to give excuses for why I spend my own money on things that I want and I need I need to stop I need to stop it's my money and I wanted these things and that is the reason so a little bit about me I'm very cheap in every aspect of my life except for what I put on my face what I put on my face She's luxury, she's extravagant. But I'm gonna show you guys everything that I got because I love seeing what people buy. I'm nosy. I don't care where you're shopping. It could be Office Depot, it could be the grocery store, it could be Target, I wanna see what people buy. So we're gonna do a little Sephora haul and I'm just gonna pull things out of here. So the first thing that we have that I got is this milk makeup set. I've never tried any of the like the milk hydro grip stuff and i've been wanting to try it so i decided to get this set so it has the hydro grip primer the setting spray a mascara and cream blush i use their cream bronzer and it's my absolute favorite so i feel like i'm really gonna like this blush then i got this biosance sunscreen i'm still trying to find like what face sunscreen i like because i'm very sensitive to sunscreen but it always breaks me out and I just ran out of the one that I've been using before this which I liked but it still like isn't perfect so I'm gonna try this one the girl at the store recommended it but yeah I have to wear sunscreen 
every single day because I'm so pale. I will get sunburned driving my car. Then I picked up another of my favorite moisturizer. This is just the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. I love this. Okay, this, I'm so excited. This has been sold out for so long and I've been really, really wanting it. It is the NARS Liquid Blush in Orgasm. The powder blush in this shade is my favorite blush, but I haven't been wearing like powder products recently. So I'm so, so excited. The Sephora by me is brand new. So I feel like they had a better selection and like a, a better stock of things than the other Sephora that I normally go to that's like always sold out of everything that I want because the other thing that they had that I really have been wanting is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in shade one. Every time I see somebody whose makeup looks stunning and I ask them what they're wearing, they always say this and it's like, I think it's something that you put under your foundation or you can wear it as foundation. But they had it so I grabbed it. It is expensive but who cares? I got this Way Matte Pomade. It's like a hair pomade to like slick your hair. Something that I have not talked about is that I'm 26 and going gray. And my gray hairs, they're very like sporadic, but they stick up straight. I'm sure in like every single video, you can you can see them sticking up somewhere. They're, they're just wild, okay? So I'm hoping this will slick them down. I just got a restock of my favorite eyeliner. It's the Stila Stay All Day. I got this BB Heat Shield Thermal Protection Mist. So this is a, a heat spray that you put on dry hair. And I was specifically looking for one to put on dry hair for when I'm straightening my hair. I got another of the Paula's Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. I love this. I go through this so much. This is probably like my eighth bottle. It is the perfect thing to like make my skin just so smooth. Then I got another color in the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Dewy Blush. This is my absolute favorite blush formula. I have like five of them. I'm wearing one of them right now. I don't know if you can see like just how glowy my face is. It's from this. So this shade is in Encourage and it's like a mauve color. I I'm like, this blush is the greatest thing in the entire world. Then I got this Ordinary Glycolic Acid Toning Solution. And I got this because I saw on TikTok that people actually have been using this as a deodorant or like to replace deodorant. Cause that glycolic acid, I guess is supposed to help with like a lot of things and it also helps prevent sweating. And so I figured like, it's only 10 bucks and it's a huge bottle. So I was like, if I can use this as deodorant, I will never have to buy deodorant again. Then I got a Laura Mercier Caviar Eye Stick. I love these eye sticks. I have a couple shades that I've had for years and they're just like the easiest thing to throw on. Like if you want a quick, easy, no fuss eye look. So I got the shade Burnished Bronze, which is just like a, like a warm brown. And then the last two things that I got, I wasn't planning on getting. They're lip glosses and there was a different lip gloss that I wanted, but they were sold out. The girl that were, who worked there that I was talking to, she was really pretty and I got flustered and she was like telling me to buy these lip glosses and I was like, okay. <laughs> They're the Fenty lip glosses. I'm not mad that I got them because I've been wanting to try Fenty's lip glosses for a long time. I'm a lip gloss girl. I don't really wear lipstick. I've always heard that the Fenty ones are like the best. I got the Gloss Bomb in Fussy. So this one's like a sparkly, kind of like pinky nude gloss. I figured that would be like my everyday color. And then the other one I got is a gloss bomb cream in the shade Mauve Wives. And I got this one because I don't have any lip gloss that's this color. It's like a, almost like a berry plum kind of color. So yeah. The pretty girl at Sephora dazzled me with her charm and sold me on these. So that was everything that I got. <laughs> I also have some book packages to open. So this one, I know what it is. Are you guys ready for this? So this is The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. This is her new monster romance with this stunning cover. I am in love with this cover. I haven't read this yet. I will be reading it soon. I've been so excited for this. I can't stop looking at this. Like the artwork is so beautiful. I hope more romance books that aren't historicals do this sort of like clinch cover design because I am obsessed. And the other package that I have here is from Sourcebooks. He is falling in love with the girl he is supposed to hate. Okay. So it says, tropes inside. Forced proximity, loathe to hate, meddling owl, secret identity. There's only one tent. Oh no, you're hurt. Contemporary fantasy. This is how this is how you sell a book. Just give me the tropes. I don't need a synopsis. 
I don't need anything. So the book is Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffin. It's an enemies to lovers contemporary fantasy standalone. This cover is really pretty. Oh, so this doesn't come out until August. This sounds really good, okay. The mug that came in it says Foggy Mountain Wildlife Refuge. Very cute. Here's a little kind bar, which I will eat right now because I haven't had lunch. Hey guys, so I have not talked to you in a couple of days. I went home for the weekend. It was my mom's birthday and she had a party. And then when I got back home, I was just like, I needed an entire day to recover because it was a lot. I was exhausted, but I have finished Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. And I loved this so much. Um, I'm giving this five stars. So like I said, at the beginning of this video, this is a sci-fi horror that's kind of inspired by like, the Titanic so basically we have this main character who her and her crew are like deep in space and they pick up this really strange distress signal on like a broadcasting channel that no one has used in decades and they realize that the distress call is coming from this ship called the Aurora which was supposed to be like the first very luxurious spaceship for very like wealthy people and something went wrong and it disappeared 20 years ago so they go to investigate they board the aurora and all hell breaks loose they discover something incredibly horrific they're hallucinating things they're losing their minds and so the story's being told in two perspectives because the main the main character who was the the captain she somehow escaped whatever happened there she's the only survivor and she has been placed in like a an asylum and they're interviewing her to figure out what happened because they think that she like had a mental break and killed her whole crew they don't believe the story that she's given them and so we have that the like the present day interviewing of her um and her like seeing hallucinating the dead bodies of her crewmates but we don't know what happened to them and then flashing back to like what actually happened on the ship it is so so good i love this main character she has experienced a lot of trauma in her life and this experience is not the first time that she has a survived like a massacre she's been the sole survivor of something before and it's also not the first time that she has hallucinated people who aren't there so as a reader we don't know if she's reliable or if like her account of the story is really what happened. And she also does not know if she can trust what she's seeing. That's a very interesting perspective to be following. There's also, oh my God, my favorite thing when I go into a book that I know is not a romance book and I'm not expecting romance, but then there's just a little sprinkle. I love the romance in here. I wasn't expecting it. And yeah, there were moments of this book that were like very scary, especially there was this one scene, you know how like as little kids, I'm even this way as an adult. The feeling of like having, like dangling your foot over the side of the bed when you're sleeping and like you just feel like something's gonna like come up and like grab your ankle. That's all I'm gonna say. If that, if that feeling terrifies you. I also listened to the audiobook for this and the narrator did a really good job, especially in like the moments of panic and it made me stressed. Like I was getting stressed because the narrator sounded stressed. I just loved this. It was great. Everything that I wanted from a sci-fi horror book um, to kind of like wrap up very quickly. I had two five stars, Dead Silence and My Dearest Darkest, and one four star book, The Last House on Needless Street. All together, very successful reading vlog. So we're ending this vlog. I'm about to start another one and we're gonna switch up my reading, so prepare. I had a very fun, horror-filled week, but it's time to get back into romance. So my next reading vlog will be romance. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!